Welcome back into Critical Thinking right here on Mojo 5 Radio. I'm your host with the most numbers, Andrew Coppins, of course. Follow me on your social medias at The Coppins Show, freedomhard.com, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Parlay, all of those sites, uh, whatever your fancy is, give me a follow so you don't miss anything. And of course, if you're listening to the show live or via podcast, what are you doing? You can see this whole thing live. Head over to the Mojo 5 Radio Facebook page for the live version of the show. If you can't catch it live, you can always hit up the YouTube channel for me, myself, and I. Just search Andrew Coppins, C-O-P-P-E-N-S. C-O-P-P-E-N-S is the last name. So whatever shall we be talking about in this second half of the show? Well, of course, we've got our upcoming interview with Watson Prenier. Before he joins us, though, that's right, the Watson Prenier from Battle for Freedom right here on Mojo 5 Radio. But before we get to talking about evangelicals and Donald Trump, we've got to be talking about the evangelical side of leftism. That means statism. But the government will take over for your child care. Yes, that's right. Child care. And how is she going to go about this? Well, you see, your child's just going to have to go to school for 10 hours. That's right. 10 hour school days. She's going to spend a billion dollars, by the way, on summer learning programs as well. And the pilot program is going to see some 500 schools for a five year period with results driven analysis being done at the end. Each school will earn up to $5 million for doing this over the five-year period, and they're going to have to keep their doors open from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. 8 to 6. Holy crap. And Mother Jones went into further detail on this program, saying that a pilot program that gives money to 500 schools that serve a high proportion of low-income families to develop a school schedule that better matches the work schedule. Each recipient school would receive up to $5 million over five years, like I said before, to keep their doors open from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. with no closures except for weekends, federal holidays, and emergencies. Professional development, parent-teacher conferences, and the like would have to happen at minimum alongside a full day of enrichment activities. At the end of the five years, the Education Department would publish a report documenting the best practices as well as changes in parental employment, student performance, and teacher retention rates to be used to inform a future broader program. Schools are encouraged to use the funding to collaborate with community partners to, to develop, quote, high-quality, culturally relevant, linguistically accessible, developmentally appropriate academic, athletic, or enrichment opportunities for students. The directive is pur- pur- uh, purposefully vague. Schools are to spend the first year surveying parents, teachers, and community members to determine what sort of extended school day would work best for their particular school population. So naturally, the American Federation of Teachers was on board, and yada, yada, yada. And by the way, folks, this is not some fly-by-night idea. Did you notice? She said the word bill. That is an actual bill being proposed in the Senate. And she's got, of course, well, Bernie Sanders and the support of multiple senators within the Democratic caucus on that side of the aisle. Now, remember back, by the way, to our little discussion about Bernie Sanders and this whole free college plan. I warned you that during that whole idea, this idea that it was going to be federally funded would come with strings. And one of those strings would be eventually down the road, not just on the uh, on the uh, college level. They would come to your K through 12 levels. This is how this happens. Folks, if this bill were to pass, it's not just about extending the school day. It's not just about what's best for the parents, regardless of the fact that any academic, any psychological study shows more time with the parents, less time with other people is a good thing for the development of the child. Never mind all of that. But it's the state for the left. The state knows better than you or I or anybody else would in regards to their children. It's all about controlling and indoctrinating your kids. So make no mistake about it, folks. Homeschooling will also be outlawed. That is another prediction that I have when I look at this from a critical thinking perspective, right? That's what we're supposed to be doing here, okay? 
Top down is what's going to happen. Bernie Sanders wants free college. The only way to get there is to attach strings to this federal money that would be coming to the states and to the public run colleges. Okay. When you take a look at that, that is what would happen. Some of those strings initially are just tied to the college level, but I guarantee you it trickles right down to the K through 12. And this would be a part and parcel of it because they would have an ability to not just teach you math and science and history and all of those types of things. They now would have extra hours to teach cultural enrichment, to teach all of these extra things. Don't you think that maybe part of this will be teaching your child about the fears of climate change, indoctrinating your students and your children into believing what the state wants them to believe, not what you as a parent would like them to believe, not what you would like to teach them. So homeschooling would go bye-bye because you can't have that in the statist uh, situation in their school control. K through 12 would have federally mandated standards as well. And those standards will undoubtedly include all sorts of wackiness. So what I'm trying to tell you here, folks, get your children the hell out of the state education system. Now homeschool them. If you have to for right now, or put them into a private school. I know that not everybody can do that, but Find the means to do so. Take your children out of this potential indoctrination scenario. Take them out. If this this whole idea of basically they're taking on rearing your child for 10 hours, Monday through Friday, 50 hours a week, 50 hours that you don't get to see your child or interact with your child. You don't see a slippery slope here. If this doesn't set off all sorts of alarm bells for you, I don't know what will. But speaking of alarm bells, let's talk with Watson Grenier.